international news, there are reports from Athens early this morning that the military government has shut off the lights in the city centre and has sent a tank crashing through the gates of the Polytechnic. This is in response to nearly three days of intellectual protests against both the government and its policies. As the authorities watched on, the students, calling themselves the free besieged, barricaded themselves in the Polytechnic, constructed a radio station, and began broadcasting pro-democracy messages against the dictatorship. The lead-up to this can be traced back to approximately two years ago, where the intellectual world of Greece has stagnated under stringent censorship. Censorship of not only every printed word, but of every stage play, every film, and some music considered politically inflammatory. The number of dead has not been confirmed, and the government has not released any information. Our correspondent in Athens stands by. στην Αθήνα. He's wondering why you don't speak. Maria, and his name is Dimitris. Thomas. What are you writing? I'm an archaeologist. I'm just making notes. I'm a professor in linguistics at the Athens University. So why aren't you protesting with the rest of them? I have business at home. Do you have a family? No. My father lives on the island. I was born there. Where are you from? Chicago. I have an aunt in Chicago. A few of my colleagues are there. I'm going to meet them. It's a beautiful island. The fish taverns. We used to go there as children in Agia Marina. My father would sometimes carry me on his shoulders. I'll be back in America in a week. You're afraid. My work here is finished. They will never control us, you know. 
the tanks. They cannot stay there forever. I have work to do in America. Όχι τώρα ρε γαμότο! Hey, what's going on? Τι συμβαίνει καπετάν Μίτσο? Περίμενε! What is going on? Excuse me. Hey, Dimitri, get, get... Maria, potirja. Τι θα πιούμε σήμερα; Ότι πίνουμε τα τελευταία 25 χρόνια. Τσιπουράκι, να είναι καλά ο Θανάσης. Hey. Dimitri, please, we don't need any cheese. Why have we stopped moving? Hey, what's wrong with the engine? We ask him what's wrong with the engine, have him fix it, get on the radio, call somebody. We're sitting out here in the middle of the water. I don't have time to be sitting out here. Then Pina here. The engine is too hot, you know. He cannot work. Well, you can still radio for help. Uh, instead, we're stranded. And is that so bad? My colleagues are waiting for me. So? Let them wait. And what? Hope that the engine fixes itself? That we drown? There's a war going on in the middle of Athens. There's tanks and soldiers and you expect me to have them wait. I have deadlines, I have responsibilities. I don't have time to eat bread and cheese and drink moonshine. Then what do you have? Why can't you just savor the moment? This is what Greeks do. I'm not Greek. But you are in Greece. You have spent half of your life studying and making notes, but you have learned nothing. My father is sick. There is no one else to take care of him. I'm sorry. And your mother? This ring belonged to her. And when I wear it, I remember why I go back.
Φιλότιμο. Love of honor. It means respecting my mother, being dutiful to my father, keeping the traditions of Aegina, staying loyal to my students and my community. This is what takes me to the island and brings me back to Athens. And today, this devotion belongs to my father. Greek citizens returned to the polls today in the first general election held in over a decade. There is much to celebrate in the birthplace of democracy as it once again has a restored parliament and political system. Earlier this year, in July, the military-led government was ousted. One year to the day after what has been dubbed as the beginning of the end for the junta, many Greeks are remembering how the impassioned efforts of a few saved an entire nation. Sneyas. I'm not sure where to begin. For the past year, I have often found myself challenging my spiritual and emotional being. I have often wondered why. I am now only coming to comprehend this, and have not yet fully understood where these revelations will take me. Despite this uncertainty, this risk, this emotional undressing, I find myself compelled, invested. I must stay the course. I have devoted most of my life in studying the ancient relics of these people, their art, architecture, philosophy, but did not pay any particular attention to their descendants. I rejected the very richness that is the fabric that creates this civilization. Their sense of honor, obligation, their perspective on life, the emotion these people carry would flood you. There is no absolute, there is no minimum. I saw myself as being different, perhaps better, and continued to push them away. In return, they challenged me. They challenged me without contempt to allow myself to be accepted. I relented, and as a consequence, I learned to accept myself. Perhaps I'm now beginning to understand them a little more. Maybe I'm delusional, maybe it's not as real as I think it is, but it's something that I haven't felt in a long time. It's something I wanted to feel when you were around. Dad, when I left you, I was a different person. Arrogant, self-centered, self-important. And even though you'll never read this, and maybe it's insane to write a letter at all, I need you to know that I'm sorry. I should have never neglected your embrace, your reach, your attempt to make a man out of me. I left you when I should have been around. Dad, I now realize what it means to truly be honorable, to sacrifice, to have respect, and to understand what is worthy. This is to embrace you. I am forever changed. And I am free. With all my love, Thomas. <laughs>